The Callum Company was an early American film studio founded in New York City in 1907. It was one of the first companies to make films abroad, and to set up winter production facilities, first in Florida, and then in California. Callum was sold to Vitagraph Studios in 1917. Topic. Formation and history The Callum Company was founded by George Kleiner, Samuel Long, and Frank J. Marion. The company was named for their initials K, L, and M. Callum immediately joined other studios in the motion picture patents company that held a monopoly on production and distribution. Frank Marion had been the sales manager at Biograph Studios and Samuel Long was the manager of the Biograph production facility at Hoboken, New Jersey. Needing to raise more capital, the two experienced filmmakers approached Chicago businessman George Kleina to come in as a partner. Kleina, already a successful film distributor, was involved only a short time but it was a profitable investment for him as his partners were soon successful enough to buy out his shares at a considerable premium. The company began operations from a small office in a loft building at 131 West 24th Street in New York City. The partners were able to lure general manager and director Sidney Olcott away from Biograph. Olcott eventually became the Callum Company's president, and was rewarded with one share of its stock. Callum had no indoor studios, so most of its films were shot on location. In February 1907, the company made its first motion picture, titled The Sleigh Bell. While Callum scored successes in their first year, the rate of production at the once powerful Biograph stagnated, hampered by the loss of important personnel. Topic: <laughs> Alcott leadership. Under the direction of Sidney Alcott, Callum made a number of significant films, including the first adaptation of Ben-Hur and the following year, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In 1910 Alcott gave actress Alice Joyce her first acting job in his production of The Deacon's Daughter. The one real version of Ben-Hur, in which Manhattan Beach, Brooklyn was used as the location for the Holy Land, was made without obtaining the rights to the book, the usual procedure in the industry at the time, and Callum was sued by the estate of the author, Lou Wallace. After the Supreme Court ruled against Callum in 1911, they reached a settlement which paid the estate $25,000 an extremely large amount for the time. The action helped to establish the necessity of film studios obtaining motion picture rights to the properties they used for their stories. In 1910, the company shot a film in Ireland, making Callum the first movie studio to travel outside the United States to film on location. As director, Alcott headed a small team in Ireland, Callum's leading lady and principal screenwriter, Jean Gontier, and cameraman, George Hollister. There, they notably filmed A Lad from Old Ireland in Cork area plus a scenic film The Irish Honeymoon shot in Blarney Castle, Glengariff, Gap of Dunlow, the Lakes of Killarney and Dublin. After the team went to Germany to film The Little Spreewald Maiden, a love story in the Spreewald with Gontier and Alcott in the lead characters. Alcott and others from the studio, Alice Hollister, Agnes Mapes, Jack J. Clark, Robert G. Vignola, J. P. McGowan, Arthur Donaldson, returned to Ireland for most of the summer in the next two years. The O'Calums, as the American entourage were affectionately dubbed, made such Irish films as Rory O'Moore, The Vagabonds, You Remember Ellen, The Colleen Bond, one of the first American three reels, 40 minutes. 22 films in total for Callum. Later on, the outbreak of World War I prevented Alcott, who had resigned from Callum and shot films for himself, from following through with his plans to build a permanent studio in Beaufort, County Kerry. 
Galvanized by the success of Irish films, Frank J. Marion decides on a more ambitious expedition, send a crew to Egypt and Palestine to shoot films, about 30 or so. Company stayed in Luxor, shot melodramas with titles such as An Arabian Tragedy, Captured by Bedouin, Tragedy of the Desert, A Prisoner of the Harem and documentaries The Pulsing Life on the Nile. But the great ambition of Callum's expedition is the shooting of the first five real film. Titled From the Manger to the Cross, it told the life story of Jesus. According to Turner Classic Movies, it is considered the most important silent film to deal with the life of Christ. In 1998 the film was selected for the National Film Registry of the United States Library of Congress. Callum was also one of the first studios to regularly film year-round by setting up facilities in Florida during the winter. The Florida company consisted of Sidney Alcott, George Hollister, camera man, Alan Farnham, scenic artist, Arthur Clough, property man, Jean Gontier scenarist and leading actress, Jack J. Clark, leading male actor, Robert Vignola, the bad guy, J.P. McGowan, and other leading actor, Alice Hollister and Ethel Eastcourt. Topic. Expansion In the fall of 1910, Callum began organizing other studio locations. In November 1910, William Wright, company treasurer, was sent to the West Coast to assess the feasibility of a permanent studio for the making of Western-style films. Wright saw the potential and after given the go-ahead from head office he acquired a property in Verdugo Canyon in Glendale and a permanent crew was dispatched from New York City. Headed by director Kaneen Buell, his crew consisted of star actress Alice Joyce, George Melford, Jane Wolfe, Frank Lanning, Howard Oswald, Frank Brady, Newt Raw M.N., Franchelia Billington and Daisy Smith. With films from the Western genre much in demand, in 1911, a second California studio was opened in Santa Monica with actors Ruth Rowland, Marin Say, Ed Coxon, and Marshall Nealon taken under contract. The Santa Monica facility eventually would be used to make comedies. Callum operated in these Southern California locations until October 1913 when they took over the SNA Studios property at 1425 Fleming Street, now Hoover Street in East Hollywood. Topic: Notable serials. In November 1914, Callum released the first of 119 episodes of the serial The Hazards of Helen, releasing a new segment every Saturday until February 1917. Each segment had a self-contained story, so it was more of a film series than a serial. Helen Holmes played the lead character, Helen and did most of her own stunts in the first 26 episodes until she and director J.P. McGowan left to set up their own film production company. The two began a relationship while working on the serial that led to marriage. Director J. Gunnis Davis, billed as James Davis took over and Elsie McLeod substituted in episodes 27-49 until a permanent Helen could be found for the remainder in the form of Helen Gibson. On the heels of the immediate success of The Hazards of Helen, Callum Studios simultaneously produced another 16-episode action-adventure series they released in October 1915 called The Ventures of Marguerite starring Marguerite Courtot. <laughs> Topic. Final changes. Alan Dwan joined Callum for a short time, as did Mary Pickford, who also directed films in 1913. Over the years, Callum contracted various other directors such as actor-turned-directors Robert Vignola and George Melford, as well as James W. Horn, Rube Miller, William Bodine, Harry F. Millard, and Robert Ellis. 
In 1915, the company lost Sidney Alcott who left to work independently for World Film Corporation, Famous Players Lasky, and other studios. In 1917, after having made close to 1,500 motion pictures, the Callum Company was sold to Vitagraph Studios. Topic: Notable figures of Callum. Frank J. Marion, Samuel S. Long, George Kleina, Sidney Alcott. Robert G. Vignola, Joe Santley, Jean Gontier, Jack J. Clark, Arthur Donaldson, J. P. McGowan, George K. Hollister, Alice Hollister, George Melford, Kaneen Buell, Alan Farnham, Alice Joyce, Miriam Cooper Carlisle Blackwell, Marshall Nealon, Helen Holmes, Agnes Mapes, Ruth Rowland, Lloyd Hamilton, Marin Say. <laughs>